Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Andre Cruz. I'm Sarazar on GitHub and Twitter. And I'm going to give you a quick demo on Identity Manager Nomius. So uh, really quickly, uh, Identity Manager is an identity wallet specification uh, and that really embraces open standards. Uh, in this case, um, really, really are embracing the IDs, or uh, for, for long, the centralized identifiers, uh, and also verifiable credentials. Uh, but the, fact, the sad thing that we are seeing today is that although, although the IDs and cr verifiable credentials are meant to be interoperable, uh, what we are seeing today is like login buttons such as continue with your port, continuing with uh, Blockstack, continuing with Jolocom, uh, which is m very similar to what we already have today with signing with Google, Twitter, GitHub, and stuff like that. So um, what this means for developers is that they need to use different SDKs to integrate into their websites, which is really you know, not the ideal because the underlying technology is meant to be uh, standard and interoperable. Um, also, and as a consequence, uh, what happens is that because developers lack, lack time, uh, they end up taking shortcuts and just implement a few of those. And me, as a developer, uh, I need to really create different um, identities that are conceptually the same, but have different DIDs. Um, so we end up like replicating the, my data, like my name and my avatar and stuff like that in all those um, DID methods and, and in all those wallets as well. So what Identity Manager uh, aims to be is to be a unified identity wallet that aims to support multiple DIDs um, and DID methods as well. So um, let me just quickly showcase um, IDM, so Anomius. So we have here um, a very uh, early, f early draft version of Anomius, which has uh, some features that I want to, to show you. So the first screen that you, you see here is uh, the setup blocker screen. You need to do this because everything within a wallet is encrypted. So you must choose a passphrase, but you want to, in the future, want to support other lock types, such as your Touch ID feature within your MacBook Pro, or even FIDO uh, USB devices as well. So let's just put a password here and continue. Um, and of course, you need to choose the idle timer so that it locks again after you are idling for some time. Um, so let's try to create an identity. Uh, let's start creating an identity right now. So um, you just choose uh, what type of identity you are, a person, an organization, or other. Um, why is there other? Well, because even your cat or your dog uh, should have an identity because your dog has uh, vaccines and stuff like that that you want to keep associated to, to, to your, your pet, basically. So let's continue and let's just, like type my name here, shoot a photo as well really quickly. So continue. And now we are setting up your device name. You need to do that because um, in IDM, you have like your identity, and you can have multiple devices associated with it. Because the reality is, is that you use your device, um, you use multiple devices nowadays. So you use la your laptop, your desktop, your mobile phone, and stuff like that. So you need to uh, import your identity or be able to import your identity in multiple de devices. Um, so what's happening now is that uh, IDM right now supports the, ID, the IP ID, the ID method, as its first ID method. Uh, but we want them to support uh, others. But right now, it's creating a, an IPNS record and also a, a DID document. And the IPNS record points to that DID document. And if we, if we quickly check the DID document uh, and its context, content, so right now we have like uh, this variable called IDM wallet, which is exposed just for development, and in this case, for just for this demo. And we have like um, identities, list, um, and let's just access the first identity and get its DID. So th this is my decentralized identifier. And if I take that and try to resolve it to a DID document, so it will be ddem.resolve and the string, and let's actually await for it because it's a promise. Uh, we get the ID document, right? And, and what you see here is that I have two public keys. Uh, because the ID documents essentially have an array of uh, public keys that you can change over time. And in this case, I have my master key, which is the IPNS key, and also I have uh, my device 
this device key uh, in my DID document, right? And also, it's important to mention that you have um, this key, uh, the device key, in an uh, in authentication array, meaning that this device can be used for authentication. So uh, let's quickly back up my identity. So uh, for now, we just have a mnemonic uh, backup, but we want to, want to support other uh, more user-friendly uh, backup processes. But for now, let's just go through uh, with a mnemonic. So I'm going to copy that. Oh, I forgot to copy. So copy to clipboard, and just put it there for now, and go through. So I need to select the 10th word, so dragon, I guess. And the third word will be fish. Right, fish, that's that. And let's continue. So yeah, my identity is secure. It means that my master key was removed from this wallet, and I'm able to recover it by using that mnemonic. So to actually show you that Nomius is just a user interface for the IDM uh, specification in wallet, I, I can now use this mnemonic, which is here. I'm going to copy it. And we have here a very uh, rough version of another wallet that uses IDM, and I'm going to try to import it here. So let's see how fast it is. It can take some time. We don't have like any feedback. So it probably will take like five seconds or something if the network helps. All right, let's wait a bit. So it's resolving IPNS records uh, already. So now it's kind of um, replicating, replicating the stuff that I have in my other device to, to this, this device. As, as you can see, it already finished it, finished it, and I have my identity there with my photo. So the funny thing is that because these wallets are being uh, replicated, I can just edit my profile and things uh, kind of sync uh, seamlessly. So if I put uh, Portuguese and my gender and you know location, because I'm in Spain right now, I'm going to put Spain um, and save it. And if you go to the other wallet, as you can see, it already replicated uh, really fast. So. Um, and actually, at the moment, uh, if I was to resolve uh, that TID document again, we will see another public key there, right? So if I resolve it, again, it will take some time, I guess. Yeah, it's already there. Let me just erase this line. As you can see, it has three public keys now, because uh, the water wallet generated a new device key, which was uh, imported into your DID document. That's very important, because now both devices can be used for uh, DID authentication and signing and stuff like that. Um, so let's quickly now jump to uh, two features of IDM, which is be able to authenticate to any app and also to sign any, any data that the app needs to sign. So we have like this very drafty example shut up that we set up uh, just to, to demonstrate um, its capabilities, really. So uh, if I type something, first, of course, I need to log in. And I need to unlock my screen, the, the wallet. Uh, and if I, if I accept, like, my, this app, this chat demo app, is asking me to, to send my personal details and my social proofs. Um, so if I, if I accept, I'm now logged in, and what happened is that the wallet created a session between, uh, between the, the app and the wallet itself. And each session is unique. It has a unique ID. And also, if I open the session object, you'll see the, the identity, the ID there, and also the profile details, which is a schema.org person object, in my case, with the details that I've filled uh, before. So now I can type messages uh, in the chat. And as, I can, as you can see here, you have like a check mark. It means that uh, I produce a signature that was validated uh, against the DID document um, keys, public keys, one of them. So let me try to explain what happened. So uh, whenever I type that message, um, the application generated like this JSON object that, um, that is associated with this uh, chat message. It has like an author, it has like a signature, a text, and a timestamp. And the most important part is the signature. So let me just give more space for you to see. So uh, the signature itself has um, a, did, a did URL there. And if you look at it, it's just my DID and the fragment pointing to the public key that was used to sign. But because I used the session key to sign, um, 
it's not, it was not signed with my device uh, private key directly, but instead uh, with a child key, uh, which is basically we call that the s uh, session key. So session keys are child keys of, um, of the device keys. And to, to derive those session keys, you take this key path here, uh, which uses uh, BIP32 in order to get it. And then you just need to check the signature uh, that is on the value field uh, against the message, the, orig the original message that that produced, right? Um, so if you look, look at it, we have like signing without anything, uh, without, without prompting the user at all, right? So this is all happening under the hood. The, the trade-off here is that session keys um, are not, while they are not stored or uh, seen by the app, uh, it's stored uh, on the wallet uh, in, plain, in plain raw text. This means that they, are, they aren't unencrypted. So this means that for use cases such as messages, it's fine. But if you need more security, you can ask to sign with your device key. And to sign with your device key, we have like an Easter egg in this example sh shared app. If you type like uh, something that contains IPFS, in this case I'm going to type I love IPFS, uh, it will actually prompt to sign, right? with your device key. And because the device key is encrypted, I need to put my passphrase there. So what you see is like a screen. Um, OK, something is wrong with, uh, with the scroll bars, but just ignore it. Um, what you see is like the, 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 the Nomius wallet, or in this case, the IDM, is asking me to authorize this signature. And as you can see, you, you get the comment there, the timestamp. So I'm going to sign it. And if I accept, the, the same kind of signature was produced, but this, the, the only difference is that the key path is actually the root path. So um, it means that there is no need to derive the key because the device private key was directly used to sign. So as you can see, we already have these features, uh, which is very useful for DAP developers. So basically, you can have authentication. You can have signing uh, either with your session keys, either with your, with your device keys. And all of this is using DIDs and verifiable credentials. Um, so in the future, we aim to, as I said, we aim to uh, support more DID methods, and they will be added over time. And also, we are very closely uh, following open standards, such as um, the ID out, for instance, and also the Credential Handler, Handler API, which are very nice uh, uh, upcoming uh, APIs that we can use in the future. Um, and lastly, let me just show quickly a website that we made for, for you to check and know more about the project. So we have like, nom, just go to nomius.io. We have like this cool website uh, that you, that you uh, can read and know more about the project. And if, if you are interested, you can actually join our mailing list. Uh, we'll be sending, be, be sending like uh, an email each month with updates that, that we have for the project. Or even if you are interested in contributing or even uh, using, uh, using it in a project, just subscribe and we will get in touch with you. And I think that's all. And thank you.